Right, the graph below shows the influence, let's get a different color, an influence of nitrogen-rich fertilizer on crop yield and the nitrogen pollution of a nearby body of water. Okay, this is a huge issue. So let's see what we are given here. They say the effects of the nitrogen, there's your heading, it's exactly what I've just read to you. This here, this crop yield, and the nitrogen pollution of the body of water. This is going to be your dependent variable. Okay. Um, the amount of nitrogen rich fertilizer is your independent variable. Okay. Now, what have we got here? We've got this graph that goes like this all the way up. That's the amount of nitrogen pollution. And look here, crop yield. So when you, you don't use fertilizer your crops are going to be your crop yields going to be here and as you add more and more and more and more and more of this fertilizer so it goes to a peak or to a maximum here okay that's the maximum effect of this fertilizer and this is the recommended amount so there's still going to be a certain amount of uh, um, water pollution but your crop yield is going to be all nice across here and you're going to make lots and lots and lots of R's. Okay, so let's have a look at our questions. Sorry. Okay, first one. Name the process whereby excess nutrients accumulate in a water body. People, you must know this still from grade 6 and 7 and 8 and 9. It is utra and then you do it in detail in grade 11 as well there's no excuse for you not to have got that mark right it explains why it is not economically uh, it, it will not economically benefit the farmer to use more than the recommended amount of fertilizer so let's just go back here if we look at this graph here is the recommended amount of fertilizer okay and that is going to give you your maximum yield of crop. So if you're going to put, use more fertilizer, it's going to cost more. Okay? But is it going to make any impact to your crop yield? No. It's going to still stay because it's now hit an optimum here. It then levels out. So you're, not going to, you're going to spend a lot of money, but you're not going to have an increase in crop yield. So if you take all of that into consideration, it's, we're looking at economic, economically benefits. So it, the crop yield, easy. The crop, I mean, this is just reading the, the graph. The crop yield reaches um, a maximum at um, the recommended amount by the fertilizer producer, okay? That's, you, you, they tell you only use so much and then you're gonna have your maximum amount of crop yield. So, Therefore, using more fertilizer does not um, give a greater crop yield, but will cost more money. Therefore, less profits will be made. When you're spending more on fertilizer for no impact. So you, you're actually wasting your money. Okay, that was very, very easy. Another nice, easy two marks. Okay, suggest so one reason why farmers are advised to apply fertilizer to the soil during the dry season of the year. Guys and girls. I mean, like, really? What happens in the dry season? There's no rain. And if there is no rain, 
well, the fertilizer can't be washed away. So, I mean, like, wow. So it's quite easy. You just say dry season means no rain. Therefore, water will not wash the fertilizer away. Okay. Um, you could also add in there um, water will not um, flush fertilizer, fertilizer away into, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, away by leaching. And leaching is when the nutrients dissolve in the water and they go into the underwater supply. So it's not left in the soil anymore. Okay, so easy so far. Then explain the effect of an increase in nitrogen pollution will, ha will have on the number of bacteria in the water. Okay, so now think about this. When there is lots of nitrogen, we end up with algae bloom because algae love nitrogen so algae bloom which forms a layer of algae on the surface of the water okay so now we've got this layer so what does that do well we end up with blocking out sunlight. So the plants below are not going to get sunlight. So um, water plants die because they can't photosynthesize. Because they need sunlight. So if they can't photosynthesize, they die because they can't make food. So your um, organisms and fish that feed on the plants die. Why? Because there's no food. So now they die as well. So we now have a bit of a calundrum here because the algae loves the nitrogen. They cover the surface of the water so there's no sunlight. So the plants die because they can't photosynthesize and produce food. The organisms and the fish that feed on the plants die because they no longer have food. And one heck of a lot of decomposition takes place. So decomposition of plant and animal material, all these plant and animal bodies, um, takes place. And what does that do? Causing mm, causing an increase in the number of bacteria. So what happens? We have an increase in the number of bacteria. It's a simple case of the basics. Algae, no sunlight, plants die, animals that eat those plants die, with all the rotting, the, the animals that haven't died die, and all we have is a lot of, al a lot of algae and a lot of bacteria living happily ever after.